Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. We are still in the thick of breaking down all of the glorious new information we've learned about Destiny 2. All of these new features will hopefully come together and give you a much more expansive and immersive gaming experience. At least that's what I want to believe in my heart of hearts. In the first couple of videos in this short series, I went over the new subclass system, and then the new weapon slots and the armor stats. If you missed those videos, you can click over to a playlist I put together that contains all of my Destiny 2 gameplay premiere coverage. Link in the description. Anyways, continuing that series today, I want to break down the new HUD and menu system and see what cool new features it might be hinting towards. Let's jump into it. So first off, let's jump into the new HUD. For this, I'm going to do a snazzy fade in, fade out effect so you can get a good sense of how it's changed. The biggest change is, of course, the lower left with your ability slash weapon pane. Here you can see that the crisp and clean graphic design of Destiny comes through a bit more, making things easier to look at, much more distinguished, and also still maintains the simplicity we love from Destiny 1. Starting from the left, we have the very welcome addition of the super icon. It's very quiet and out of the way, but dresses things up a little bit and makes it very easy to see which subclass you have equipped. Next to that are the new ability icons, which are now smaller and are now color-coded, again reinforcing your subclass equipped. The color also makes it much clearer to tell whether or not you have an ability ready. Also now there's three icons instead of two, the first two representing the grenade and melee cooldowns you already know about, and then of course we have the brand new class ability in slot 3. Next to that is a refined weapon and ammo display, now featuring a color backdrop for your currently drawn weapon. And also your magazine ammo count has been flipped to the other side, allowing them to make it larger and more prominent. The other two changes are to the effects and sounds of taking damage and recovery. When you lose your shield, you now experience a very cool graphical representation as your shield now visibly deactivates in front of your eyes. And upon recovery, the sound effect is much more prominent and satisfying. Aside from that, the new mission objective display looks much clearer and more visible and features some really nice animation. And also the supercharged notification has been tweaked a bit to match the new graphical style. Overall, everything just looks much more crisp. Also, another quick thing I noticed in the radar, which is largely unchanged, except it now features a changing glow in the center ring, so you can tell whether or not an enemy is getting closer or farther away from you. Nice little subtle touch. Now, moving on to the menu screen for Destiny 2. The first thing you'll notice besides the incredible new color scheme is that the emblem has been moved from the right to the left. Also, the emblem now changes the color scheme of the entire top bar with a faded version of the emblem logo cropped in. This will help make the menu feel much more customized. Next to the emblem is your name along with your level and light. The interesting thing here is that this is the only place your level is available to see. It's no longer visible next to the character art in the middle. I think this makes sense since your level never really felt super important, especially after hitting the level cap. Then under that we see what is most likely the new experience bar. On the right side of the top screen we have the new menu selection, the different tabs are records, clan, character, inventory, and settings. Sadly we've only seen character, clan, and settings. What is no longer here are roster and progress. Clans has replaced roster to reinforce all of the new social features, which we'll dive into more in a separate video this week but roster has now been moved to the new map interface, which again we'll cover later on in the week. This same page also gives you access to the destination director, letting you load up any activity or location without going to orbit. Moving roster here makes a lot more sense since it's where you're going to be organizing your next activity. The other big change here seems to be with records, but since we haven't seen that tab yet, it could simply be a renaming of the progress tab. And I imagine this will still be where you manage all of your progress with things like record books, bounties, and reputation assuming all of that still functions the same. So hopefully we'll have access to it at E3 or perhaps during the beta. I strongly believe we'll have a PvE info stream of some kind that dives more into the interface along with all of the new PvE activities. So let's hope that's the case. Anyways, aside from that, we also haven't seen the new inventory tab with currencies moved out to the main character screen. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the design of that page. I just hope our inventory space has been greatly expanded to accommodate for more quests and adventure items and especially for the new weapon mods, which again, I assume will be individual items you collect. And speaking of currencies, we can see what looks like legendary shards on the top here, although we've seen another currency in its place called Strange Dust, so I'm not sure what that's all about. 
Moving on to settings, we know it's going to look exactly as we've discovered during the capture event, maybe with one or two new settings. You can probably expect the layout to be a little different on PC, since we know we're going to get a detailed PC settings screen, although no one was able to capture footage on the PC version, so we'll just have to wait and see what that looks like. But back to the character screen, the subclass icon is much clearly distinguished against your gear, and we can see that light is definitely still a thing, and will likely continue to define your progress past the level cap. Below light, we can see the newly refined armor, agility, and recovery stats, which are now defined by your armor instead of your subclass focus. Armor slots are the same, including the class item. However, artifacts have now been replaced by clan banner. Here you can see it locked, but it's likely only locked because this character may not be part of a clan, or they simply may not be ready to show off the full extent of what that looks like. Now about why we have our clan banner here, I'll be diving into that later this week, but in short, I believe it has to do with clan reputation and experience gain. Also the toggle from the gear to equipment is now more quickly accessible by pressing down on the d-pad, which is a nice touch. Now remember this is just what they showed us during the reveal. If the awkward weapon icons are any indication, this is still a work in progress, but I believe that this stuff and some of the sandbox balancing is all they have left in development of this game over the summer. Anyways, I'm a huge fan of everything I've seen so far. As a design major, I have an immense appreciation for everything they've done to spruce up what I already consider to be an immaculate design. But what do you think of the new user interface, and what other surprises do you think we have in store? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe for more Destiny content. And I will see you all next time. If you look at these screenshots from some of the footage that we got, we can tell that some of these weapons seem to have laser optics. So maybe you can get special scopes to add accuracy, or maybe even an extended mag. So my theory is that where weapons might be losing in the area of base perk selection, they might be gaining it back with mods.